445 hero. 445, good morning. Not so good afternoon. Yeah, not so good afternoon to Ali. For, for me, actually. <laughs> yeah. I have a headache. So we got 4pm uh, and 4am. Well, we're going to a really cool place. We're going to prime time seafood. Yeah. Our friends over at Sushi Chef Institute mm -hmm. work with prime time and they're a sustainable tuna farm. Yeah. And it's done down in Baja, Mexico, mm -hmm. and they invited us to go to that and take a look at it. But right now we're in LA, we're gonna go check out the facility mm -hmm. right next door to LAX. So, and they're saying that um, between five and seven is when the tuna come in. So we're gonna do some tuna grating, check out the supply. And their, their stuff is absolutely beautiful. I saw the pictures that I have from the tuna belly to all that, unbelievable, it looks so, so good. So it's really a hero, but um, I'm excited to yeah. check it out. So super early again, we just got to the Primetime Seafood yeah. Hero and we had the pleasure of meeting Matt, Matt Ito. How's it going? He's in charge of um, this company's marketing and, and what else, Matt? What oh, else? Yeah. It's just sales out here. So yeah, we're Primetime Seafood. Yes. We're an LA-based importer. Uh, we specialize in fresh tuna. We got to start in 1989 bringing uh, fresh big guys out of Ecuador. And now we do all sorts of different tuna. but. I'll, big emphasis on bluefin out of Mexico okay and uh, striped bass compache we're actually trying to be like a sustainable hub for Baja California nice nice we're excited to see your place thanks for having us of course yeah all absolutely. right Joey. now your deliveries just say they come between five and seven uh, yeah deliveries come all the time 24-7 okay. really uh, we actually have a handling company that comes and picks up our product whenever we need to but uh, yeah, we, we start processing this morning. We started at 3 a.m. Oh boy. Yeah, so uh, we've got guys in here processing orders uh, from pre sales earlier in the okay. week. And yeah, a lot of consistent customers. But uh, yeah, we should be moving a lot of bluefin today. Nice. That's nice, nice. on the menu. Typically, we're moving a lot of bluefin on our Tuesday morning. So it's just a lot of hustle bustle, boxes moving in and out, you know, so. Getting, been getting product ready for truck shipments, icing, getting product for air shipments, gel ice, basically rewrapping, repackaging, and uh, getting it all across the country, really. Nice. <laughs> well, where do you ship to? How far do you ship to? Uh, we ship as far, well, we ship all over the United States. So, you know, JFK, down to Hot, Orlando, Miami, up as far as uh, we go into Canada too, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver. So all over the United States, really. So. Yeah, nationwide. And how do people know if it's your product? This says Primetime Seafood on it? Yeah, I mean, um, the, we, well, we, it, it doesn't necessarily say Primetime Seafood on it. it. We're known for our bluefin in okay. general. Um, we are the sole distributors or basically the, so, sell the majority of bluefin tuna in the United States. We, uh, we import and wholesale, I would say, more than... Don't quote me on this number, but more than 80% of the Mexican bluefin in the United States. Wow, amazing. And how big are your fish range from? How heavy? So the fish range right now, uh, average size right now is about 180 pounds. 180, okay. So with the head-on, gilled, gutted, it's about 180 pounds average. Okay. So that's about, uh, yeah, in the 80 to 100 kilogram size range there. Okay, mm -hmm. nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And this is what they're moving right now, right? The bluefin. Exactly, right, right. Wow. Like look, look like mini bodies, hero. Wow. 180, 180 pounds. 180 pounds. That's how much I weigh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Will you fit in one of these boxes? Yeah, definitely. Let's check it out. Can we, can we take a look at some of these? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah you can and this is Blake. Hi. Blake's one of the brothers. How's it match brother right here. Yeah. Part of the family here. <laughs> well, the family uh, business. If it's possible, we'll, we'll, we'll show you the, uh, the tail cuts right now. Okay. Each one of our bluefin are actually inspected and graded for quality so when we take a bluefin we actually uh take actually we do this all with all our tooth and bluefin regardless of the species um we'll take a tail cut and do a and a, a plug a core sample on the fish as well and those are going to give us some some key indicators on the fish right so freshness color clarity also fat content you'll notice some fat on along the edges here with some uh pinkish kind of color Right? See that more than two. Let's actually go for that. So you use this like the grade, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, show us, show us a good quality tuna and a poor quality. And what kind of lighting are you guys using? 
Just regular halogen? Yeah, so this is uh, this is actually this incandescent bulb here. Look at that. Man. Okay. Regular, yeah, halogen. So, um, yeah, on your on your Primo tuna, so we'll see a couple different things here, right? So this is your typical number one kind of tuna. Um, not too much fat on this fish, but uh, good red color, nice and clear, a deep rosy kind of red, right? This fish right here, if you look to the left of it, you'll notice that it's got a little bit more pinkishness to it, and that's gonna be an indicator of uh, fat content there. So you'll be seeing a little bit of the, kind of like the fatty marbling strands as you look closer up. Um, and then maybe something like this, right? This is gonna be something on the lower quality spectrum. Still usable, still uh, uh, has different kind of use, so maybe like a seared all heat application or a poke or a cooked application. It's gonna be more on the channel for this one. Now they just brought this out. Now what are they gonna do with this here? So we're gonna uh, half cut this bluefin. So taking off the top loin section right here and then all uh, the bottom loin section. And that's what you guys are gonna be getting. Okay. The fatty belly loin, the prized <laughs> belly loin nice. of the bluefin. Yeah. And this is a yellowtail or bluefin? It's Blue a bluefin. Bluefin, okay. How can you call it a bluefin? Because I know sometimes, you know, you see these little things. Right, yeah, so it's this is, uh, a lot of tuna actually have this, the yellow fins like this. Okay. But that's actually, uh, the indicator of the yellow fin tuna is actually more here. So bluefin actually have these smaller fins like this. And then what you really notice about a bluefin is it has a real nice round shape. You know, the belly is really prominent on the fish. Um, and the, you're gonna, if you actually feel in the, inside, in the belly right here, it's thick. It's really thick. Okay. So that's, a, that's where all the fat is. Right. right. How old is this fish, in your opinion? Uh, this fish is, uh, I would say, no younger than three or four years. Four years old? Yeah. Um, bluefin actually me reach maturity about four or five years old and okay. spawning age. Uh, this is about getting and reaching that size. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, on about 180 some pounds, would this be a lighter one of your speech of your fish, or do you have? heavier ones that come in we do have heavier ones too so they get upwards of uh 250 pounds okay yeah so that's that's kind of the bigger size that we're seeing on, on this size of uh, okay on this kind of bluefin you might notice there's actually a hole right here this is actually from uh from uh ekjime life kill so the brain so they actually take a plugger and they will do a brain spike the fish is instantly brain dead and then they actually run a wire a wire down the spinal cord of the fish, which will be a complete nerve kill. So it's the most, uh, most, basically the most uh, humane, humane way to take care of the fish, okay. dispatch the fish, but also it maintain uh, the integrity of the product itself. So the fish is not flailing around, it's basically one and done. Yeah. Um, the minute that it's pulled out of the water and dropped into the ice slurry, Ikejime kill and everything is about a minute and a half. Okay. So it's a quick process.
beautiful. You guys are going to be taking this bluefin loin with you and uh, we'll put another care package together too with a couple other fish for you guys okay. as well. Okay, this is for the event for tomorrow. Yeah, the event for tomorrow. Okay. If it makes cool. it to the event, Hero. <laughs> right? We, you and me, we, we finish this tonight. <laughs> Check this out. Oh my goodness. Excited to be here with Mr. Rexito. He is the president of Primetime Seafood and we're just having a conversation about how the whole tuna culture is done. The supply of bluefin tuna to restaurants and, and uh, in the tuna industry is is generally th from three different sources in the world. There's, you have, you have or four different sources in the world. There's tuna ranching going on in Australia, Mediterranean, uh, Mexico, and Japan. And our region is Mexico, in Baja, California. So uh, this, the process is uh, tuna ranching as opposed to tuna farming is about um, uh, is that is that the initial uh, start of the culture is, is is catching wild fish, and it's 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 akin to like um, like a feedlot uh, uh, mentality where you catch the catch the fish, they're lean, and you put them in cages feed, in ocean cages and feed them until their fat content and the meat quality gets to a certain point where it's where it's optimum for uh, for for uh, for the market, and. Um, our process in Mexico, the, the, the bluefin are northern Pacific bluefin and they come, they migrate across uh, from the Japan Sea and they hit right around Mexico about halfway down Baja California. At that point the fish, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a resident population, there's also a, a migratory population that will, that will cycle back to the Japan Sea, uh, it's about a two year cycle. But um, while they're over here, they'll run along Baja California, California, and as far north as Oregon. 
but um, we captured them in Mexico, in Mexican waters, and the system is, is using uh, purse seiners, which are, which are uh, used mostly for canned tuna uh, fishery, but the, the purse seiners are giant uh, vessels with, with um, very large nets that will, that, will, that will wrap a whole school of tuna. And once that school is um, captured, then there's a, uh, a small fleet of what we call towing vessels that, that shadow that purse seiner and uh, have cor corrales or corrals. It's like, it's like uh, um, again, like uh, kind of like cattle, think of it. And the fish are passed from the, from the capture net into these into floating cages. And then those cages are then towed at a very slow rate of speed to the, to the farming region, which is in northern Baja, around Ensenada. So when, uh, once, a f once the cages get to the site, there's um, uh, beautiful f uh, sites where we have anchorages and uh, boats and divers and all, and the, the, the feeding process starts. So then you'll feed the fish for probably anywhere from you know, four to six months uh, if, it's, it's in the, if you're in, in cool waters. Or um, in fact, really there's a lot of what we call carryover fish that are kept in the cages for one year and sometimes two years. And on the smaller size fish, um, they uh, can double in weight, almost double in weight every year. So like a 30 kilo fish will be 60 kilos a year from now, or, or almost four times that size in two years. So the fishery is more, it's a, it is wild fish, but it is very much, uh, once those fish have been captured, it's very much fish farming. Um, and uh, the, as the, as the, the fish uh, 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 improve in quality from the feeding uh, during that time, then decisions are made whether uh, when the fish are going to be harvested, fat content, size, all that stuff. So we're on the marketing side of it in the U.S. and Canada, and um, Primetime will uh, then, then buy the fish that you saw earlier uh, and ship it, you know, grade it here and then decide which, which customers in, uh, in different parts of the country, and, uh, uh, quality, quantities, and that kind of thing. And, and that's how bluefin tuna is, mo I'd say 90% of the bluefin tuna that's eaten in sushi bars is from a ranching operation. Okay. No, it's not, it there, you know, the, the, the value in bluefin tuna is in the toro, and the, and, the yes. and the belly toro, and the fat content. And you just, you can get that from wild fish, but it's not, um, it's not something you find in the wild always. It's always uh, in certain, uh, you know, certain times of year, certain regions might have wild bluefin with toro, but what you see as a consistent supply throughout the world is definitely from aquaculture. Okay. So we have another, there's another project I started um, in, in it, in Ensenada, which is a striped bass. It's the only ocean farm striped bass in the world. Um, and uh, that is completely sustainable from egg to, to harvest, where we have a hatchery, uh, on a freshwater hatchery on land in Ensenada. Because uh, striped bass are anadromous, they're, they're like a salmon. They, all, they, grow, they live in the ocean, but they, but they spawn up the rivers. So they go, so that's all, all fresh water. So they'll come up the rivers to spawn. So that's why the hatchery phase of, uh, of the culture is in, is in, uh, in a hatchery and fresh water. Uh, so that's, uh, that's another project we've got uh, going on in, um, in Ensenada. And it's um, a uh, sustainable sea bass that is sashimi quality and it's the best striped bass you'll ever try. Yeah, we can't wait to try it. We've seen so much and hearing so much about it. We're excited to try it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's got, you know, and there's, you know, in general, people, they also, there's a, there's kind of a misconception out there. I've been in a seafood business for almost 40 years, uh, and the culture side of it, and also in, in um, wholesale and commercial uh, uh, seafood. And there's a misconception out there with people about uh, wild and farm. You know, a lot of people say, they have it in their head that, oh, I only eat wild, I only support wild. And really, there's a lot of, um, the reality is that the future of seafood is going to be in sustainably farmed fish. I agree. And uh, the whole, uh, it's true as a, that the, it is true that the best quality uh, 
the best tasting fish that you can find is probably a, a perfect wild fish. But a perfect wild fish is maybe only uh, wild caught fish is maybe only 10% of the of the wild catch. Yeah. Right? It's uh, and the reason is that when you're fishing, say in, in our case with, with tuna, long line caught tuna is probably the um, high. It is definitely the highest quality tuna that you'll see in sushi bars. Uh, but the problem is that. Uh, or the reality of it, it's not a problem, it's just the reality of the fishery is, the, is that um, long line vessels can travel easily a week just to get to the fishing grounds and then they'll fish two weeks and then come back and take a week to get back so the people, so when you're eating fish at a restaurant uh, a wild caught fish, many times it's a week and maybe three weeks or even a month old right. fresh, now there's nothing wrong with that because if, you're, if it's handled properly and the chain of coal is done right, um, it, it, can, it can be excellent quality. But compare that with farm fish, where the farms, if, it's, if their procedures are done well and they're following all the rules and, they're, and they respect the environment, you've got fish that is, um, is harvested to order. It is uh, perfectly uh, and, and humanely killed and, and and processed, and it comes to you with a with a controlled chain of cold. So that fish is fresher, better quality, and more consistent than wild. Mm -hmm. So really, it's just like every other uh, food you eat, whether it's produce or poultry or whatever. It, it's about it's all about investigating your sources and make sure that it, it is it's from a farm, and and that the farm is, and the farm practices are. Um, exception so yes. that's that's you know it's, it's it's not fair to put seafood or fish on us on a different pedal on a different uh, category than then your produce then your meats and other, exactly. other feeds of exactly. foods. you know it's basically you know all our food in the future is going to be is farmed yeah and it's all about making the right choices and selecting the right uh, groups that are producing our food so that's what we're about we're about uh, vetting those farms, developing those farms, so that so the procedures are are, are um, uh, sustainable, and that we have you know fish for us and for our kids. Yes, you know, many generations, generations to come. Yeah, I mean, so the farming, you know, so you know, supporting fish farms is actually saving wild fish because you have less pressure on the wild fishery right. and you allow them to grow and there's That's a lot a and point. The, yeah and there's a no I mean it's true there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fisheries out there that are actually uh, uh, for example in our case we, there's a lot of bad press about the bluefin tuna which you just filmed but the truth of it is that bluefin tuna worldwide is on a is on a comeback and some of it is 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 in the Mediterranean there's um, the, the, the population of bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean are better than they were in 1970. Wow. And that's because of conservation efforts, yes. lower quotas, uh, fishing quotas, and you know, there's just a, it, it's, it's really a success story and, uh, that, that y'all should report because there, there's a lot of bad press out there, but there's a lot of, you know, when, when environmentalists, commercial, and, and, and science get together and they actually put in uh, um, um, measures to, to preserve a species, it, 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 especially with the tunas and, and the types of fish that spawn millions of eggs, they have absolutely the uh, ability to come back. Yeah. And on our west coast here, our Pacific bluefin, which we are, we're, we're farming in Mexico, we're ranching in Mexico, uh, the bluefin population since when I started, it's there now, uh, and since the last say four years, there's been more bluefin tuna in this region than, than fishermen have seen in 40 years. Wow! So the recovery, That's great to know. the recovery's back. You know, the science and the and the and the um, uh, uh, stock assessments will catch up to it, and I think you're going to see some good news in the future. We That's already great. know it is, but it, it's coming. Yeah. So we're, we're we feel good about what we're doing because we. We're on the water. We know. We see what's going on. Yeah. And, and there's a lot, and it's just a lot of positive uh, signs that the bluefin population is stronger than ever. Well, Mr. Joe, thank you so much for all your information, all that great knowledge.
and we look forward to tasting your product later. Right on. We'll Take see you care. tomorrow. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. What a treat here, old wow. spin, huh? Yeah. Prime time seafood. What an exactly. amazing operation. 180 pound bluefin tuna. Yeah. Beautiful. We have Matt and Blake brothers here. How you doing? It's a family business. Thanks yes, so much sir. for having us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, we're really happy to have you guys out here. You know, we uh, hope you guys can check out more of our stuff. You know, maybe check out our Instagram too. or at Primetime Seafood Inc. Um, and our website too, PrimetimeSeafoodInc.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank and you so much. Yeah, and also we all, uh, if, you, if you saw that striped bass, you can find it in Whole Foods also. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, check out their stuff too, Pacifico doc, uh, PacificoAquaculture.com. There yeah. you go, mm -hmm. thank you. And such an honor to be able to work with a master. Thank you, Hero. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See you guys soon. Welcome.